Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Cynic Alex. And yeah, we got another Mega Tier 2 token event. I don't know what's going on at Mar Net Marble Monster HQ. They don't want to give us better rewards for game modes, but they're going to keep throwing Mega Tier 2 at Mega Tier 2 tickets at us. So I'm going to keep throwing Mega Tier 2 guide videos at you. Now, it was a month ago that I made the last video, and not much has changed as far as characters are concerned since then. We've basically only gotten Yelena. And while Yelena is very strong, there is another sort of thing that I want to focus on as far as the Mega Tier 2 ticket, and that mostly revolves around the characters that I don't focus more on, but I get a lot of questions about. Danger Room characters, especially when you pull them from Vibranium Chests, and Processor characters. So I'm going to show you guys an updated Mega Tier 2 list. This was made mostly by Cool Maxim Rocks. Thank you so much. He's a massive help to me. Big shout out to him. And I'm not going to be referring to this list throughout the video the way that it looks now, but I'll just remind you guys what it looks like. You've got a massive list over here if you scroll to the right. These characters are a huge mistake to Mega Tier 2 because they're very easy and basically free or almost free to max out or they're half cost characters. So it's just it's just a huge waste of resources. And then, of course, you have the all important. You can't use a Mega Tier 2 ticket on these native Tier 2 characters. You just it's just impossible. Now, the more important thing is here we've redesigned the way that the mega tier 2 list is created and i just want to focus on this for a little bit now before we get into the details and the nitty-gritty about each individual character so i'm not going to be looking at the whole list i'm just going to be breaking it down here based on these characters just quickly want to point out before we cut this off from the editing that the value is essentially talking about characters value in terms of how expensive they are for you with most regards to real money not to time because as far as time goes, it's going to take the longest to get characters from the processor, but it's free. Whereas with the bio X gene sub, you can get characters fairly quickly, especially if you're just trying to unlock them. It's just $10, boom, one minute, but it's $10. It's real money. So I tend to value the real money cost as the highest value. Doesn't mean they're the best, doesn't mean they're the strongest, but in terms of being the most expensive, therefore being the biggest bang for your buck. Because to get a character's gears from 15 to 20, which is basically what the Mega Tier 2 ticket is going to do for you, and then also the 150 BIOS to Tier 2 them, you can use a regular Tier 2 ticket for that. But just to get the gears from 15 to 20, it's going to cost you on average 350 BIOS. That is more than half of a BIOS Select subscription, and it's more than you know half of the month. So you're going to be waiting, in some cases, 20 days or more just to finish off a character's gear, and you've already spent $20, $10. So it really doesn't, you know, make that much of a difference compared to the processor and other things. And you still have to spend real money. So it goes bio gene, X gene, uh, bio sub, X gene sub. Then it goes legendary battle because like the bio and X gene sub characters, you can get them for six stars like Yelena, Nick Fury, Valkyrie, Ghost. But again, the gears won't be maxed out. So you're going to have to spend real money to get the gears maxed. If you don't make a tier two ticket, then the crystal shop characters, because crystals are basically time or real money, then danger room, then processor, then shifter doesn't talk about their power level but does refer to how difficult and how costly they are to obtain so now just taking a look at the regular list I want to break it down for you because it's a bit different than what I've done in the past and it's important to recognize um, what how I'm valuing these things now of course how I'm valuing these things is always just a personal opinion and the way that I understand the game you don't have to agree with me you can come with your own list you can follow your own guides and your own way of doing things by all means it's just my opinion this is the regular disclaimer but the way that i wanted to uh divide characters for the mega tier 2 option is basically what you're going to get when you mega tier to them now some of the characters on the list are stronger than others even though they're in different categories so each category is more meant as a way of describing the character not describing the character's power level so you shouldn't look at this list as a tier list i'm not saying that god tier are the best and support are the worst now it just so happens that luna snow is the best character or arguably the best character in the entire mega tier 2 list so she's the top left and then you could argue that wave may be the worst or like nadia van dyne may be the very worst character in the mega tier 2 list and they're sort of like bottom right but that's more a coincidence and that's more a product of the way that it's been designed it's not necessarily representative of the characters as a whole because for example professor x is at the very top of pve he's a god professor x is amazing he's insanely powerful and he's very hard to get if you didn't buy his um his pack his his, his bonus his a bundle pack but the bundle pack will just ignore like you if you buy the bundle pack you would never mega tier to him so this would be assuming that you get Professor X from the Danger Room boxes by getting to Vibranium. Now that's very rare, extremely rare, very low chance. 
but if you get him he's amazing so he's a very very good option for a mega tier two but he is put in the pve only category because he basically doesn't have any pvp value does that make him a bad character no but so you need to do a little bit more research on your own if you're going to um you know make these assumptions otherwise you should look at that and basically just see that top bar where it says you know pve pvp shadowlander support use that as a rough guide and then see and compare that to what you need on your roster most people need more characters for pve so they'll naturally gravitate to either the first three categories god tier pve pvp or pve only but then from there you should really judge based on you know how of course how difficult the character is to get i'm sure if you pulled professor x twice from the danger room box you're going to mega tier to him over mystique because mystique is just a click and purchase so the you know the value there and then the feeling of being able to mega tier to him is completely different and i totally understand that um but i just wanted to illustrate the character's sort of general use without illustrating their power because as far as his power is concerned professor x pve wise is right there with luna snow and namor it's just that he doesn't have any pvp value or his very little pvp value so yeah you sort of they're sort of self-contained the characters aren't supposed to be compared left to right they're supposed to be compared top to bottom so as far as top to bottom is concerned if you were to pull rachel summers negasonic and professor x all from the danger room box i would say definitely first case your best option right away is to mega tier to um professor x beyond that i i think mo more players would gravitate towards negasonic than rachel because mind control is a little bit more free to play friendly than all defense down a lot of the best all defense down characters you know cable Deadpool, uh, Nimrod, they're either paywall characters or they're expensive native tier twos that you need to build up. You have to buy uniforms for, you know, you have to buy Cable's newest uniform to get that striker ability. He's also a when, when attacked striker. So yeah, because of that, um, I think Negasonic is a little bit more valuable. I didn't really talk much in the last video a month ago about the Danger Room characters. So that's why I'm trying to focus a little bit more on them now. I know a lot of you guys out there grind in Danger Room trying to pull these characters. So I want to justify and explain why these are really good options for your Mega Tier 2. Rachel Summers is a little bit worse than Negasonic because she's just not a very good standalone character. Negasonic can actually kill Cull Obsidian. She's a good character in her own. She's, she's even better than Rachel for Shadowland, so she's actually very good. She can go into like the 90s in Shadowland or higher. Rachel Summers is good because of the mind control, but like I said, mind control is easier to get from strikers. It's easier to get on characters. It's cheaper. It's more free to play friendly. And Rachel is a much weaker character standalone. She's got an awkward rotation, etc. Uh, so that is what i think for the most part of the danger room characters keep in mind kid omega is technically a danger room character like you know um you know bishop and the other guys but also nightcrawler but you can also get them from the processor so those because they have multiple ways of being obtained those characters are generally easy to easier to obtain uh, and so they're not as valuable for a mega tier 2 ticket because the easier a character is obtained then the less value the mega tier 2 has for them now another big one that i think a lot of people are going to be asking about is yelena 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 yeah she's really good guys she's really good and one thing we discovered recently that i didn't talk about in any of my videos hopefully you've seen all my yelena videos is that with her uniform you've got to buy the snowsuit she does her fifth skill as a striker so she's basically a mini version of nimrod both literally in terms of her size and figuratively because she may not be quite as good as nimrod for pvp she may not be quite as good as nimrod for pve because he can go to minus 100 all defense down with um what is it annihilation protocol or extinction um because of the leadership from white fox or dr voodoo but she's almost as good like i said she's almost as good as him in pvp and pve and she has a all defense down striker skill so she's going to do this skill it's not listed but it's a hidden effect it's a minus 50 percent all defense down so really 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 strong character gonna help your account out top to bottom i think she definitely deserves to be on this list one character um and in general the the support characters i don't want to undervalue them but for the most part i put the support characters white fox valkyrie ghost uh kitty pride baron zemo wave they're all in the support mostly again doesn't mean that they're bad characters but for the most part if you were going to mega tier to them it would be for the, their support role and I think that's for the most part why people mega tier two Nick Fury and Ghost Panther. Now they're very good and they will buff up the rest of your roster, but in terms of you know getting things done, they're not going to be as good. So you really need to look at your roster again and decide, you know, are you are you needing characters who can get things done on their own? Like are you needing hammers 
or are you needing the characters that can support the hammers like power gloves or whatever the analogy might be so yeah nick fury as a standalone character not that great especially now with the striker changes he's probably taking a hit don't see him very much in pvp anymore still good though but his his support value is undeniable but he's just not you know he, he can't match up and he might actually be losing some value because of how much more valuable strikers are and being able to mega tier to a character like yelena or nimrod and then being able to use them basically you know five times a day because you can use them once as a clear and then you can use them four times as a striker that is super valuable whereas nick fury he's not a striker and you can only use him once a day so actually yelena might be better than nick fury that's crazy now another thing i want to mention really quickly about the is about the heroic quest characters in general it's a bad deal to mega tier to the heroic quest characters because it's going to take you at most three months and at least or you know minimum two months but it's not that many crystals to get those characters to tier two and all you have to invest is a regular tier two ticket that you get from your regular regular monthly check-in because the reason is you know you spend 750 crystals you spend the whole month playing uh, heroic quest yeah it's a bit of a drag but you get 440 bios so at minimum you'll get almost 900 bios after two months that's almost enough to get a get a character completely maxed out at tier two with max gears and then you can just slap a tier two advancement ticket on them so yeah the mega tier two not very good deal proposition the way i would the way i would explain it is if you already have all of these god tier characters if you already have you know two or three of these characters and two or three of these characters then maybe you could mega tier two characters in these last two categories shadowland and support but otherwise you can just slow grind those characters because let's be honest as as updates pass and you know as the months move go on and the time passes guys um marvel future fight becomes more and more of a barbie collector game it's already a massive barbie collection it's 218 characters so you you don't need all these characters right you're, you're gonna mega you're gonna end up mega tier twoing a character that you don't necessarily need so that is why it's important to and that's why i wanted to you know categorize the characters it's important to recognize are you looking to get someone to push shadowland are you looking to get someone to do something very specific in pve or pvp and then from there you can sort of take that into consideration along with how difficult it is to get the character so let's say you're, you're really invested in pvp and you're like yeah you know what i can get colossus for free but it's going to take me like six months to, to, to tier two him so i can just tier two him right now and i'll save that six months of time and that's worth it to me because that's six months sooner that I'll be able to play in PvP with the teams that I want. I'll be able to experiment with more defensive teams, whatever, turtle comps, whatever it is that you want to do. So you make that distinction, and then you make a tier to him. Versus just looking and saying, oh, well, you know, Valkyrie's the rarest character on my on my team, so I'll just make a tier to her. I don't really think that's a good idea anymore. Rarity is important, but also the value and what the character does for your roster, especially as we're ballooning up to 250, is, I think, more important overall. So hopefully this mega tier two list has helped you. Hopefully I've shined a little bit more light on the characters that I was kind of ignoring in the last video, like Danger Room and Processor characters. Uh, keep in mind that the Processor characters are largely weak, uh, even though they've gotten uniforms. So generally speaking, I would just say no as a blanket statement to all Processor characters, despite their rarity. I know that they took away the Ultimates packs from the store, so there's no other way to get them now, but they're just not that good. So that just sort of reinforces what I was just talking about. Rarity is not the only thing to focus on. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.